Well, eventually you knew that we would be coming around to discussing neoplasia. It is without a doubt the single biggest topic in general pathology, and the second or third biggest topic in the whole book, as a matter of fact. Um, neoplasia is a topic that is extremely intimate and dear to most pathologists' hearts because that's what they do all day. If you were to ask me what did I do most of my life, I would say look for cancer and hopefully find it early to save somebody's life. Uh, every pathologist considers himself an expert on neoplasms. Uh, and it is extremely important that I explain this uh, topic clearly and try not to confuse you with the rush of uh, a molecular biology there is about it. You have to have a really, really solid feel for cancer and uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, the chapter is divided into these nine areas. Uh, definitions, nomenclature, biology of tumor growth, epidemiology, a couple of chapters on molecular, which I'll try to decaffeinate as much as possible, uh, some stuff on uh, agents, and then a lot of interesting clinical stuff on host defense and especially clinical features of tumor. These are the nine topics and uh, we will approach them uh, correctly. Well, I guess every pathologist could define cancer in his own words, uh, but uh, here is probably uh, somebody who put it in the very, very best possible way. And that's pretty much what we would normally say anyway. A, a neoplasm is an abnormal mass of tissue, the growth of which exceeds and is uncoordinated with that of the normal tissues and persists in the same excessive manner after cessation of the stimuli which evoked the change. This is Willis's definition. And remember, all neoplasms, or if you want to call them tumors, or if you want to call them benign tumors and malignant tumors, they are genetic changes. You can't have a tumor or neoplasm of any type unless there is a change in the DNA. And remember, it's autonomous. You, your body was not uh, expected to grow tumors. It, it does it all by itself through a variety of factors. And also, you have to keep in mind the uh, clonal uh, aspect of uh, neoplasms, which means no matter how big or extensive a tumor is, it eventually results from one single cell. Now sure, in many, many, many generations there could be mutations, but the, um, the uh, mother of all largest tumors uh, is always and has always been, eventually, one cell. Uh, let's get a little bit into nomenclature. Uh, there's a generally a pretty good uh, consistent uh, system which has some exceptions, and uh, of course, uh, all benign tumors, or most benign tumors, end with OMA. Most malignant tumors end with carcinoma or sarcoma or lymphoma. Um, mesenchymal tumors are tumors which are ultimately derived from the tissue we know as mesoderm. It's what we call connective tissue. So a benign tumor of cartilage would be a chondroma. A benign tumor of fibrous tissue would be a fibroma. A benign tumor of bone, technically, would be an osteoma. Now, interestingly enough, if you put the word sarc towards the end of the word, that would be the malignant counterparts, but we'll get to that later. Uh, tumors of epithelium, whether, whether they are derived from uh, ectoderm epithelium or entoderm, ec entoderm epithelium uh, go by a variety of uh, adjectives, uh, the epithelial tumors and the uh, glandular benign epithelial tumor is classically called adenoma of some sort. If the uh, epithelial growth uh, overlies a fibrovascular mini stalk of connective tissue, it is frequently described as being a papilloma. If, uh, for example, 
there is a benign uh, tumor which has a cystic configuration but still grows perhaps internally with a finger-like array of fibrovascular core supporting epithelial cells. A proper name for this would be a papillary cyst adenoma. And uh, you can see my little typo over there, can't you? Uh, a polyp may not even be a true neoplasm at all. The best definition for a polyp would be a uh, tumor or protuberance, uh, not necessarily true neoplasm, that uh, is generally a blebbing off, B-L-E-B-B-I-N-G, off of a mucosal surface. It may be a true neoplasm, but in many cases, it just may be swollen or inflamed um, mucosa. Uh, here's a classical polyp. This is a colon that's been opened. Uh, you could see uh, the house tray. You could see these little structures. They're pink, and they look like they're kind of propped up on some type of excess of uh, uh, mucosal flap. And these are polyps. If this flap is uh, apparent, they're called a uh, stalk of the polyp. And uh, let's say, for example, uh, microscopically now, you have epithelial cells, benign, that are supported by these finger-like arrays of fibrovascular core. Uh, there's a perfect one there. These are all, this is a very, very good example of a papillary uh, type of tumor. If these uh, cells wound up being totally benign, you call it a papillary adenoma. If microscopically, you could see areas which were had all the evidence for malignancy, which is what a pathologist's job is, uh, you call it papillary adenocarcinoma. Here is uh, that colon polyp that we saw right here. You see the little uh, pink area supported by a flap of uh, mucosal connective tissue. This is what it might look like microscopically. This is the world's most classical uh, polyp. Uh, if you wanted to call it a uh, tubular adenoma, because a lot of these little glands are kind of tubular, that would be fine. Uh, if you want to call it pedunculated by virtue of the fact that it has this pedicle, which is surrounded by this mucosa here and here and has uh, blood vessels and connective tissue in the middle. You could call it that. The one thing you probably would not call it is villus because most of these structures are basically round and tubular or glandular or adenomatous rather than uh, finger-like, like we saw over here. The best name for this would be adenomatous polyp, and indeed, that is precisely what it is usually called. Uh, let's talk about the nomenclature of malignant tumors now. Uh, malignant tumors derived from uh, mesoderm or mesenchymal tissue are generally uh, in the family of sarcomas. For example, a chondrosarcoma is a malignant tumor of cartilaginous tissue. A fibrosarcoma is a malignant tumor of fibrous tissue. An osteosarcoma is a malignant tumor of bone tissue. A uh, liposarcoma would be a malignant tumor of fat connective tissue. Pretty much the same exact nomenclature as the benign, only we have the word uh, sarc in there, don't we? Uh, carcinomas generally form either glands, squamous sheets, or neither. The ones that are uh, forming glands or are formed from glandular organs are called adenocarcinoma. Carcinomas or malignant epithelial tumors formed from squamous uh, mucosae are said to be squamous cell carcinomas. If they don't really form squamous features or glands, very often they're just called undifferentiated or large cell. And remember, carcinomas uh, can arise from any of the three uh, germ layers, but Carcinomas by themselves are tumors of epithelium. We'll call it uh, quits for now and uh, start in with some nice pictures in part two. Thank you very much.